Hi there, and welcome to the latest episode of Cool People. Now, over the last couple of years, since I came out very publicly as being trans and started doing trans awareness training and public speaking on trans issues and media appearances, I've met loads of fascinating people and amazing people with incredible stories to tell. And so I thought in this series of, of Cool People, I would share my friends with you. And one of my friends today is a young trans man called Romano Rangeley. Now, I met Romano um, at a gender clinic that we're both actually on the waiting list for. That's another story. We'll go into that in a minute, I expect. <laughs> um, and, and we actually just happened to sit next to each other. So they had a, a welcome day um, just where they broke, us, broke the news to us that the, the waiting list had been extended yet again. Um, and <laughs> I saw you roll your eyes there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can't help it. I know, I know. Um, and, uh, and anyway, we just happened to sit next to each other and we just hit it off. And, and, and I just thought, well, it's great to, to get someone because I mean, obviously, you're used to sort of seeing me, you know, an old fart sort of sitting here, you know, age 50, you know, but it's good to have a younger perspective. So, Romano, welcome to Cool People. And thank you very much for agreeing to take part. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So, um, so, so really, it, it's been fascinating just to hear the perspective of a young trans person. And I just wonder if you'd like to share your, your story with us, please. I'd be very happy to. Great. Um, I think one thing that I've kind of noticed about my story compared to a lot of people, especially um, within the older generations, is that I, I did have some phases of trying to fit into what, society thought I was but pretty much from the beginning it was just a case of that doesn't feel right so what else is there um it was more around the teenage years that I started trying to fit in but I wasn't at a good school and it was quite a toxic environment um mm. so I kind of repressed a lot of who I was but um Throughout childhood, I can remember saying to my friends, you know, half joking, half serious, that if you ever want a boyfriend when you're older, I'll be here because I'm, I'm going to become a bloke when I'm older. And um, What sort of age yeah. are you saying that? Well, there's one instance of it that I don't remember because it was that early, but my friend, who's more like a brother, has come to me saying that um, it's one of his earliest memories of me, so that would have been about maybe four or five years old. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I remember in, as well in high school, having a proper deep conversation about it with two of my friends at the time, saying, I think I'm going to have a sex change when I'm older. Obviously not knowing, wow. you know, the correct terms and stuff. And still just exploring it, because I got a lot of questions of, oh, well, do you think you'll be a gay man then or a straight man? Or, But at that time, I just didn't know because mm. I wasn't sure who I was attracted to. I hadn't felt anything yet for anyone. Mm. And I think this, this, is, was, this, is, this is the thing that gender and sexuality are compl two completely separate things and they're not linked, are they? So, and so many people get them mixed up, and including ourselves sometimes. You know, so, so, yeah, so, yeah, sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> it, it's cool. It, it, it's kind of made me made me think back on a point from that that I am quite impressed with on that note because these friends of mine when I said that they were like okay that's fair because they're not exactly the same thing yeah yeah so it, it it's just good to see people the further we go through time just getting more of an understanding of that yeah <clears throat> um it was only later that I started feeling an attraction um, this other friend of mine, um, who I did end up getting, uh, getting together with, and we were the, f we in the school were the first lesbian couple. So once news got out there, it traveled fast. Really? We, were, we went from being the nobodies of the school to the people that everybody wanted to talk to, whether it was bullying to be to have the gay best friends <laughs> it it was a mad couple of years yeah. but um it it never fit right with me being called the lesbian couple um 
and it kind of reignited those thoughts of, well, if I'm not a lesbian, then what am I? And for a while, I ended up exploring, you know, bisexuality and um, all these different terms that are coined with it. But it's eventually, I felt that pansexuality was right for me. Okay. Just because it's, it doesn't put a label on who you want to be with. Uh, um, labels are overrated, I think, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> And to me, that's what I see the difference is in between pansexuality and bisexuality. Bisexuality is, you know, you're attracted to men and women and all the other genders, but it's specifying that... It's very much one or the other, isn't gender. it? Yeah. And, yeah, it does include trans people and intersex people, but for me, it just feels too drawn to those labels. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but eventually, I, I, start, I got into a college course for law, which really started having me look at, you know, different LGBT plus issues, which brought me closer to the trans community as, at the time, a trans ally. But I started to notice more and more similarities between myself and other trans people that I was meeting. Right. But me being the oblivious fool I was, <laughs> I didn't put two and two together. Really? <laughs> Not until about December 2017, when my mother offered to get me a haircut for Christmas. And I hadn't had one for a while, so I thought, why not? Um, but the more and more it went on, the more and more it seemed to drift away from what I wanted, which was, um, it was long, but I kind of described it as kind of messy, easy enough to put back in a, a ponytail. Um, I was thinking at the time of a video game character that I like called Ezio Auditore. Yeah. He's got kind of long hair himself. Um, but again, it's drawing that similarity between myself and a very masculine character. Yeah, yeah. Um, but by the end of it, it just seemed more Jennifer Aniston than lovable rogue. Yeah. And I, I didn't know how to deal with it because it, it was a nice haircut. I was grateful to Mel, my mother, for getting me a haircut, but it just felt like I could take it off and it was a wig. It didn't feel like my hair at all. Wow. I think deep down at that point, I knew exactly what it was because my first reaction was to go and seek out this... Um, youth worker I'd been working with in college that was running an LGBT club at the time um, and looking back just the fact that my mind went to him mm. someone who specialises in LGBT plus issues for problems with a haircut mm. interesting yeah. yeah so I think I did know I just hadn't accepted it to myself it's the hardest thing isn't it yeah Accepting yourself. Nobody wants to be trans, do they? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I certainly didn't. I, mm -hmm. When I was younger, I hated the idea of being transgender. Mm. But it's because I had so much misinformation about it that I didn't properly know what it meant to be trans. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought that you had, you had to have a certain amount of surgeries and procedures before you could class yourself as trans. Mm. But now I know that isn't the case. No. You don't need any if you, if you don't no. feel it's for you. No, 
no that's right and i think this is the thing that so so many people just think that it is all just about the surgery and, it, and it's it's not there's so much more to it and that's that's part of what i'm trying to do in, in, in trying to ed educate people just to show that and when i do my trans awareness training courses I, I go through the sort of typical processes but then i explain that not everybody goes through every stage and they everybody's transition everybody's journey is completely unique to them so exactly. uh, yeah yeah no I, I t t totally yeah, totally agree with you my partner that i've been with um still from high school um she was absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. um helping me through it because um there was never any question about what i was experiencing um and they didn't take anything that i'd said and try and twist it to something else and they've been they've been absolutely brilliant supporting me through this and we're still together today oh, i'm so pleased for you that's fantastic and you're engaged as well aren't you yep hey. 20 days after i went public that i got engaged wow <laughs> Well, that's going for it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well, I got I I got an opportunity to propose that I couldn't pass up. What I already have I, I already had the plans to do it. Yeah. Um, but my original plan was that I was going to take them to Italy for their birthday and propose on the birthday. Yeah. But um, in February we went to see some YouTubers that we liked in the Manchester Apollo. Okay. And I went early because I wanted to see if I could meet any of them beforehand. Because um, I'd watched these people for donkey's years. Yeah. Um, and I met someone there, just somebody else that had turned up early. And I got talking about my plan to propose. And he said, well, why not see if you can do it here tonight? And I was that idea was the spark that my mind needed um the gears were going but i was thinking oh but what about my plan i've already got yeah but you get the chance to propose on stage in the apollo you don't miss that <laughs> wow <laughs> you must have, must have been pretty sure that the answer would have been yes then yeah <laughs> we don't. otherwise it's a big risk otherwise isn't it yeah <laughs> We'd already discussed um, marriage, and they were completely on board with it. Yeah. Um, but we just hadn't like made it official. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, brilliant. So they well, knew it was coming, but they didn't know when. Yeah. And I, I've asked them since. Did you know what was going on when I was taking you up there? And they said that they only realised once I started talking on the stage. Wow. Well done. <laughs> That's amazing. That's something really brilliant to look back on though, isn't it? It's mm. fantastic. If I had any tips for anyone trying it, I'd just say don't look out over the audience before you've asked the question. Because <laughs> I didn't, I just focused on what I was doing on the stage and focused on my partner. And then afterwards I looked out and I could just see people. <laughs> fantastic oh that's lovely though that's great so brilliant so and then so going back to your to your journey so um so now i mean we're both at a similar stage in the fact that we've um you know we're still on the waiting list aren't we for, for the for the gender clinic we our gps both referred us why well, was that just over two years ago wasn't it and uh yep. Obviously, the coronavirus is going to delay things. It, you know that's understandable. But even when you take that out of it, I mean, the NHS um, gender um, clinics—they're they're just completely overwhelmed, aren't they? They're just—they're just—it's just too much demand and not enough supply. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, exactly. It's just—I mean, when we were in that room together at that meeting. Uh, there was a lot of angry people there, weren't there? Because you know we we'd just been given this it, this broken this news that 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 the the waiting time was going to be so much longer, and you you could just feel the anger of the people there. And, and I mean, I'm one of the lucky ones. I've I've been paying privately for treatment, so that's why I've been able to to to, 
you know, that's why I've been on HRT for, for nearly two years now. But but the majority of people in that room weren't as lucky as that. And yeah, it, it, it's, it, it must be so frustrating. Yeah. And, you know, looking at the state of the country today, I think if, you know, if gender clinics carry on like this, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that just can't afford to go on with them because they won't be able to get HRT. No. Um, I've heard of quite a few people, you know, trying to transition, you know, from my age before even telling their parents. Really? So, like, to e to have that setback as well as trying to keep it hidden, but I can't imagine the pressure they must be under. No, and the thing is, there's more and more people coming out as, as being trans now. I think as as you know, as, as people like me and and others sort of come out uh, and and sort of tell our stories and 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 educate people, and, and there's been much more in the media. And I think because people know about it much more, and much more aware, and much more accepting these days, um, it's. It, it's made it, it's empowered people to to do it and to see that it, it, it really is okay to be trans and, and that's one of my big messages is that it really is okay to be trans that's why i call my business call to be trans because i wanted to show that it really is okay and i think the more people see that and then they realize that actually yeah they can admit it to themselves because i really struggled admitting it to myself because i didn't want to be trans no one does you know? um it's really really hard but of course then when you do the urge to do something about it is just so over, overwhelmingly strong and you just want to get on with it and and and, and do it and because then you meet that hurdle and you, you can't and you, and you know and then it's it's pot luck in terms of your gps because gps i mean i was very lucky with my gp has been lovely she's been great mm -hmm. i mean she admitted that when i came out to her and just you know asked her to be referred to a gender clinic she admitted that she'd never treated a trans person before she and she's got you know she hadn't got any knowledge of, about the process or anything but I sort of preempted that because I from the research that I did I knew that most GPs hadn't been educated in this so I printed off a load of stuff off the internet and from the NHS website and from loads of other places I went in with this pack for her and said right there you go <laughs> Come on and she was brilliant she's taken it on board and she's she's actually done research herself as well and she's she's fantastic and and um she's been so supportive uh, uh, but i know that i've been lucky because lots of my friends when they've gone to their gps they don't want to know and, and it really shouldn't shouldn't be there should be much more education for gps on this mm -hmm. and i think there is a plan i think with the nhs for um for gender treatment to come into to to, to local gp surgeries but it's not there yet um, and I think, and I think the gender links will be there for the more difficult cases. But it's just we're in that in between stage at the moment. That hasn't been implemented yet, has it? The LGBT Foundation has been doing a lot to educate um, GPs. They've got this. Um, I can't think of the word, but they've got this thing for called Pride in Practice, hmm. um, where they actually where they're in communication with GPs up and down the country, just trying to educate them in. Brilliant. Not just trans health, but LGBT health. Brilliant. I've, yeah. I've been in touch with them recently, trying to get myself sorted on bridging hormones because I'm going to be changing doctors because my last one said no. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's the thing. And so, so many of my trans friends have ended up doing that, having to ended up change their GPs just purely because of that, just purely because of the, you know, the, that, the, 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 um, the opinions of, and attitudes of their GPs. Um, that, that certainly needs a lot more ed education for GPs. And I was I was just lucky that that I you know I've got a supportive one. Yeah. Um, but um, but even then, yeah, this I I asked for bridging hormones from them, and that they, they, they wouldn't give them to me just off their own back. So I had to then I had to go through a private gender clinic, and then be assessed by a psychiatrist, even though um, gender dysphoria isn't classed as as a, a mental illness. Um, it used to be, but then so did um, being homosexual. That used to be um, classed as a as a mental illness, and yet now, and you think well, it's just unthinkable. <laughs> but but it you know it's not, and 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 gender dysphoria isn't anymore. But we still have to be seen by um, by psychiatrists. So we have to see a psychiatrist first, and then you have to 
then to go see an endocrinologist to, to sort out the hormones. And, and so all that I'm having to, to pay for th privately. And then they advise my, my, my GP um, about it. And, and, and so, so she, the two of them are, are, are working together. But, but so, so many GPs won't do that. And so you're stuck with it, aren't you? So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, well, I mean, I say, so, well, both of us, we were supposed to have had our first appointment at the gender clinic months and months ago, but yeah. it's it's just dragging on. And uh, obviously this coronavirus. I've, network, been, uh, I've been keeping an eye on the time um, before we met up. And the... Um, the countdown clock reached zero around the time we were brought in for that um, workshop. So I thought that that was going to be the start of it. I did as well. I felt really, well, to me, I was thinking, oh, something's happening now, but it's just not, is it? No. no. I mean, I remember, I remember putting something on my Instagram when I got the letter pretty much in tears about it. Yeah. Just from relief. But now it, it's just a repeating trend. If I get close and they put it back. I know, I know, and 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 the thing is that I mean, I you know, because the, the, there aren't that many gender clinics in the country anyway, and you know, when when we were both referred, you know, I was looking at the ones that the one nearest me um, had a, a you know a very long waiting time, and then the next one nearest me had a long waiting time as well, and the one that we're at um, had at the time it was the shortest waiting time in the country and so even though it's further for me to go I thought well actually I'll go for that one so that's why I ended up there um but now things have happened there and and it's just all gone to pot now and when you look at their website it doesn't they're not even saying when they're making first appointments for they because they, they used to didn't they they used to sort of say yeah. oh, we're now looking first appointments for people who were referred in you know January 2017 or whatever now they're not even doing that um it's just, yeah, it, it, it's tough, isn't it? I think it's because they're trying to secure some more resources, so that time could go up and down mm. quite dramatically within the next few weeks. Yeah, I think, I think, well, probably months. Yeah, I think a lot of the problem is it's of getting the right staff in because, and a lot of the specialists, because there's no, there's no sort of route for, for the specialist to, to get go into gender um, care. Um, so, I, you know, often they drift into it from from other specialisms, and I, so I think yeah. it needs to have a, a definite pathway for people, you know, in the medical profession to actually in, enter into it, and then just not getting them, and then people are retiring or they're falling ill or whatever, um, and and they're not replacing them. But so you've got that that side of it, but then you've got the other side where you've got thousands more people coming out as being trans, wanting to be treated. And, and it's just like the perfect storm, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I, I, I really hope that, um, I really hope that we both get seen soon. So we're both, both at the same stage on our, you know, in, in terms of referrals, aren't we? So, um, you know, ho hopefully, um, you never know. Hopefully, might might bump into you at, uh, <laughs> at the clinic at some point. Hope, hopefully, not too long. So I'll keep an eye out for you. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I'll certainly let you know if I, you know, when I get my my letter, my, my letter of first refer, you know, first appointment through. Same with me. Yeah, thank you. And in terms of um, speaking out to other young trans people, because I mean, obviously, you know, I'm very public and I'm, you know, on social media quite a bit as a as a as an older gobby trans woman, <laughs> um, but as a young trans person. Um, is there any sort of advice or, or anything that you would give to um, to young trans people who might be watching this, who might be struggling to accept it themselves? Maybe is there any anything you you'd like to sort of say to them at all? Stay safe, but do whatever you need to do for you. Yeah. Don't listen to what other people say you are, because only you can define yourself. Absolutely, yeah, and I think this is the thing that I found that that living your truth is just amazing. And when you actually do admit it to yourself, and you actually do do something about it, it feels amazing, doesn't it? It's so empowering. Um, yeah. And and I've seen so many people, you know, where they struggle initially, and then you know after a little bit of 
a little bit of help and you know then they just blossom and and then they really and you can see how much happier they are and i mean i i just count the number of people who've said to me that i look so much happier now and i am because it's 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 the real me and yeah we have to go through a a lot of crap along the way it's not, it's not an easy journey is it ramon no <laughs> but you know i know that journey that will make us stronger absolutely and i know that it's the it, it, absolutely the right thing and so i'm really glad that i was able to accept it and so i think acceptance is the key isn't it you, yeah you can't fight it can you uh, certainly can't well thanks ever so much for for taking part in the cool people and being being my cool person today um it, you know, i really Thank do you yeah um and thanks everyone everyone for for watching um, and please catch up with my next episode of Cool People. I wonder who the next cool person will be.